In this summary of Moonwalking with Einstein by Joshua Four, you will learn how your memory works, why the art of memory has declined since antiquity, and how to store childhood memories. Introduction. What am I gaining? Learn how to enhance your memory capacity. Do you possess a poor memory? For those of us who have this limitation, we tend to believe that it is permanent. In reality, however, anyone can significantly enhance their ability to remember even complex information. The only requirement is the acquisition of a few simple yet remarkably effective techniques. These summaries will teach you how your memory functions, why the practice of memory has diminished since antiquity, and how to preserve memories in your childhood home. Key statement one. Our memory capacity is not fixed, we can increase it through practice. If you've ever met someone with a knack for remembering names or facts and wondered, why can't I do that? You can improve your memory too. It is not a talent that you either have or don't have, all you need to do is learn how to utilize your memory effectively. You can accomplish this by practicing the phonological loop method, in which you repeat the information you must remember to yourself. In a classic experiment, psychologist Ka Erickson and his colleague Bill Chase presented an undergraduate named SF with digits that he was required to repeat back to them. Initially, SF was able to retain approximately seven items in his phonological loop, which is an average result. However, after 250 hours of practice, SF was able to increase his memory capacity by a factor of 10. In addition to the phonological loop method, you can enhance your memory in a specific field by becoming an expert in that field. In the 1920s, scientists examined the general cognitive abilities, such as memory, of world-class chess players. Expert chess players perform significantly better than average chess players, but not significantly better on any of the general tests. Later in the 1940s, however, a Dutch psychologist discovered that expert chess players possess a so-called chess memory that allows them to perceive the chessboard differently than novice players. That is, they focus on the most important spots on the board and, rather than perceiving the board as 32 pieces, they see a few larger pieces. While their general memory remained the same, their chess-specific memory vastly improved as they gained expertise. Key Statement 2. Changing the way your brain stores information can help you remember more. Do you remember numbers easily? Could you recite the numbers 122,420,001,012,001 after only a single reading? Most likely not. The majority of us can only remember 5 to 9 pieces of information at once. What if these numbers were split into the dates December 24, 2000 and January 1, 2001? The information remains the same, but it is suddenly much simpler to recall. This is known as chunking. Chunking means combining information into larger, easier to remember chunks. For instance, try to remember the 22 letters head, shoulders, knees. It becomes much easier if you try to remember it as head, shoulders, knees, and toes, as this turns 22 pieces of information into only 4 chunks. Using elaborate encoding, which involves making information as vivid as possible, is another way to increase memory capacity. As our brains evolved, we were more concerned with remembering information from our senses, such as the smell of poisonous plants or the visual cues that led us home. Therefore, we can take advantage of the way our brains are pre-programmed by employing our senses and imagining as vividly as possible the things we wish to remember. Imagine you want to remember a shopping list of pickles, cottage cheese, and salmon. To use elaborate encoding, you could imagine a glass of pickles on your bedside table next to a tub of smelly cottage cheese in which a good-looking man or woman is bathing with a salmon. In this way, you're much more likely to remember the items. Key Statement 3. We retain memories unconsciously. Consider the case of E.P., an amnesiac whose memory critical brain region was damaged by a virus. Despite the fact that E.P. is unable to learn new information to recall later, research indicates that he can do so unconsciously. Psychologist Larry Squire showed E.P., along with other patients, a list of 24 words to memorize. Within minutes, E.P. could not recall any of the words. In fact, he had completely forgotten the exercise. EP then sat in front of a computer monitor where 48 words were flashed on the screen for 25 milliseconds each, so the eye could catch some but not all of them. Half of the words were new, and the other half were on the list, which EP had seen before. Surprisingly, EP was much better at recalling the words he had seen before, even without consciously remembering them. Consider swimming or biking, we don't consciously remember how to do these things as we do them, but they are stored in our unconscious memory. These memories are called non-declarative memories, or memories that exist in our brains but that we cannot recall at will. To have an effective working memory, we must be able to access both our non-declarative and declarative memories. Key Statement 4. 
Memory was an essential skill in ancient times. Many of us disliked learning facts by rote in school because it seemed so pointless. This is especially true now that we can simply look up the information we need on the internet. In fact, memorization professionals have existed throughout history as the keepers of the world's oral traditions, whose task was to remember in order to pass on knowledge and cultural heritage where written language was limited. In ancient Greece, for instance, minstrels and bards recited myths about the gods and classical tales such as Homer's Odyssey were transmitted in this manner before they were written down. We know this because they were recorded in the anonymously authored Latin rhetoric textbook Rhetorica ad Herennium, written between approximately 86 and 82 BC. The techniques described within were so well known that Cicero said he didn't need to waste ink describing them again in his own work on the art of memory. In an era before the widespread availability of books, a precise memory was essential. Many notable figures of the time were also renowned for their exceptional memories. What changed? Key Statement 5. As a result of the invention of the printing press, memory lost significance. So why is modern human memory so poor? Well, the decline in the significance of memory is actually correlated with reading and the book. Before the modern book, there were scriptures. However, they were viewed as a reminder of facts the reader already knew. They weren't exactly easy on the eyes, either. Before 200 BC, the scriptures lacked punctuation, and words ran together in a continuous stream of capital letters without spaces. Not that it mattered, reading was so stigmatized at the time that famous philosophers such as Socrates railed against learning to write. He believed that it would promote forgetfulness and lead to intellectual and moral decline. Everything changed when Johannes Gutenberg invented the printing press in 1440. With the advent of the printing press, the cost and speed of producing a book decreased, allowing even the poor to afford a small library. As a result, reading grew in popularity, and the art of memory declined. Although we rely heavily on external storage, many of us are dissatisfied with our inability to remember, which creates a vicious cycle of recording and forgetting. Key Statement 6. Even though teaching proper memory techniques would improve students' education, schools do not do so. Why should we learn to improve our memory when we have books and smartphones at our fingertips at all times? The answer is straightforward, because a better memory can help you accomplish more. Matthews teaches at a high school in the South Bronx where the average socioeconomic status of the students is low and the dropout rate is high. Each year, he selects a group of students he calls the Talented Tenth, teaches them memory techniques, and enters them in the USA Memory Championship. As a result, not only do they improve their memory, but they also perform better in school. In fact, every single member of the Talented Ten passed their final exam within the last four years, and 85% of them scored a 90 or higher. The majority of school-aged children are taught to memorize information through rote memorization, which can actually impair their ability to retain information. In an experiment, psychologist William James spent more than two hours per day over eight consecutive days memorizing the first 158 lines of Victor Hugo's poem Seder. On average, he memorized one line in 50 seconds. After establishing this baseline, he then attempted to memorize John Milton's Paradise Lost, but he took 57 seconds per line. It turns out that practicing red memorization with the first poem hindered his ability to memorize the second. Red memorization is simply insufficient. In order to improve our memory and facilitate academic success, we must learn the appropriate techniques. In the following sections, we examine several of these. Key Statement 7. If you want to remember people's names more easily, visualize their names. Imagine being at a cocktail party where you don't know anyone. If the thought of learning new names causes you to break out in a cold sweat, you may need to make the abstract names more memorable for your brain. Let's examine the Baker slash Baker paradox to determine why our brain favors more impressive facts for memorization. Researchers provided two individuals with an identical photograph of a man. One participant was told that the man's surname is Baker, while the other was told that he works as a baker. A week later, the participants were asked to recall the information provided with the photograph. The recipient of the information that the man is a baker remembered this information, whereas the recipient of the information that the man's surname is Baker was unlikely to recall this information. The reason for this is that we remember things based on their context. For example, when we hear that someone is a baker, it triggers a whole network of associations. He wears a large white hat, he needs dough, he probably smells good, and you might even feel the heat coming out of the oven where he works. All of these vivid details make the name easier to remember. Make an association between the sound of the person's name and a vivid image the next time you need to learn a new name. For example, Ronald Reagan could become Donald Duck with a ray gun Reagan.
these images trigger larger networks of associations in your memory, making them easier to remember than simple names. Eighth essential statement. Use mental images or feelings to remember lengthy passages of text. Even if poetry isn't your thing, reciting famous poems or speeches can impress certain types of romantics. But how can such a complex text be memorized? To remember entire passages, you can create your own alphabet of images, as the famous German memory artist Gunther Karsten did. Because remembering poetry is difficult due to its abstract nature, Karsten often visualizes a similar sounding word or pun in its place. Because these are the types of images our brains remember best, Karsten's technique works particularly well with sexual or humorous images or puns. For instance, if you need to remember the word best, you could imagine the best breasts ever bouncing about. Mental athletes, individuals who compete in memory-based competitions such as the USA Memory Championship, also employ the technique of associating emotions with poems or prose. Corinna Draskel, an Austrian mental athlete, divides poems into small segments and assigns a series of emotions to each segment. Rather than using images, she uses emotions to make the words less abstract and to link the distinct parts of the poem into a continuous stream of emotion, which is easier to remember than abstract words. Key Statement 9. To remember information, assign it to a specific room in your memory palace. Now that you understand how to convert abstract ideas into memorable forms, you must be able to store and retrieve them at will. This is where your memory palace comes in. The memory palace, or method of loci as the Romans called it, assigns each image to a specific location along a well-known route or prominent location in your mind. This is a highly effective technique because our brains are particularly adept at remembering locations. To employ the method of loci, you can select any familiar building or route. For example, you could visualize yourself standing in front of your childhood home and entering through the front door. The key to this method is to mentally place images of things you want to remember at specific points along your chosen route or in a particular room. For example, you could mentally place a loaf of bread and a bag of tomatoes from your shopping list on the table in your kitchen. Then, when you need to retrieve your shopping list, you can simply walk along this route and recall the images you place there. When studying for multiple courses, for instance, you can designate one room for biology, another for history, etc. Obviously, you can also use other memory palaces, such as your commute to work or your favorite walk around the lake, so long as you know the route or location well enough to remember it in detail. Final Summary The primary theme of this book is Since ancient times, when reciting texts and stories was a respected and vital skill, the art of memorization has declined. These days, we rely more on books and technology for storing information, and an exceptional memory is often associated with savants. However, with the proper techniques and sufficient practice, anyone can achieve extraordinary memory skills. Actionable advice. Employ sex, humor, and feeling. Utilize these themes to help you memorize a significant text. This fantastic book by Joshua 4 can be obtained by clicking the link in the description box. Thank you for viewing. Remember to subscribe, like, and share with family and friends.